Okay, so uh, this uh, tonight's talking to strangers. Uh, I, starting with the story, I guess, is a good bet because this is the place where we all meet a lot of strangers. This story starts at 6:30 in the morning at Toronto's Greyhound Station, a castle made of pigeons and street meat and hot garbage uh, throughout the summer. Um, I stood basically waiting for a train to London, I mean a bus, because it was the Greyhound, <laughs> wishing I could afford the Via train. Uh, standing there, 6.30 in the morning, and uh, this woman approached me. I was by myself, she knew that. Um, she had two huge blue suitcases behind her, you could have fit a full grown man in each one. She may have, I never found out. Um, and she came right up to me, left her bags there, can you watch these, and took off. And I mean, we all kind of have that contract that we hate. It happens in libraries and coffee shops and airports. Can you watch my bags? And you, you don't really want to be responsible for someone's stuff, but there, we haven't really developed a great excuse yet. And Dawn was a master, like she knew that, so she didn't even let me respond. Can you watch my bags? Gone. Uh, she took off and I stood there by myself and I thought that was it, but I saw this woman who, um, if you ever had a bar in your town called the Corral or uh, Cowboys, Dawn would be there seven days a week. Dawn uh, would be there when they were closed. Uh, that's the best way I can describe her. She approached me with a uh, McDonald's breakfast in each hand, handed one to me and told me, I got you an extra hash brown. And uh, you know, that's a great gesture, but where I grew up or where I worked for a long time in uh, South Oshawa, whenever somebody, say, gave you a pack of cigarettes or something, that wasn't really a favor, that was like a debt that was going to be called in and you'd end up driving some guy with a DUI to his friend's house in the south end at 2 in the morning. And so right away I'm, I'm slightly suspicious of this extra hash brown of this whole situation. And then Dawn starts talking to me. And she starts to tell me she's from Timmins and that, of course, uh, her brother in London is dying. But uh, she can't remember what from. So I don't push that point. She starts opening up like a choose your own adventure book of how her brother might be dying. It could be his diabetes. He might be missing a foot by the time she gets there. She doesn't know. It could have been a heart attack. Let's talk about where it could have happened. Maybe at the grocery store. Maybe at Canadian Tire. She's exploring all these options. And I'm, I, she seems to be kind of making this up as she goes along. But, you know, I let it go uh, because she got me McDonald's breakfast. So, you know, they don't do the pancakes anymore, which is terrible, but it's still, you know, it was Egg McMuffin, it was two hash browns instead of one. So, you know, I stood there with her, I accepted that contract, but I was kind of, you know, getting tired of, you know, it could have been cancer, it could have been so many different things, she just wasn't sure. And she wasn't going to take a plane from Timmins because her whole family was afraid of planes. It was like those families that all hate pineapples, or all hate, or all allergic to peanuts, except with them. When they saw a plane in the sky, they would cross themselves, apparently. I don't know if that's something people do, but she told me about it. Uh, the bus pulled up. Thankfully, McDonald's breakfast was gone. I figured I had paid my dues, but uh, Don, of course, was not done. Don asked me where I like to sit on the bus. And I, thinking quickly, said, well, what about you? And she said, well, I like to sit near the back. I like to, uh, you know, sit by myself, sleep, whatever else works for me. Uh, I also like, you know, being close to the bathroom in case I gotta go. And that's when I knew Dawn and I really had nothing in common because I like to stay as far away from human waste as possible. I will go into the woods instead of the porta potty, porta potty. And uh, Dawn prefers to contribute to that whole thing. So. Right away I said, you know what, I like to sit here in the front dock. And she said, that's, I've never done that before, I'll give that a try. <laughs> and so for three hours we continue to play Choose Your Own Brother's Adventure Death. <laughs> for three hours I sit beside the window with my head against the glass thrumming. 
for three hours, I think about those movies. I think about I am a fugitive from a chain gang. I think about Oh Brother Where Art Thou. I think all these movies are shorter than this bus ride and those guys were chained together much less long than I was. And Dawn continues to tell me all about her life, but again, it's all choose your own adventure. Her mother burned her house down when she was 12. Her mother burned her house down when she was 15. Her mother forgot to install the carbon monoxide alarm in their new house when she was 16. And maybe that's why her brother was dying. So we finally arrive in London. I believe I truly have paid my penance for that McDonald's breakfast. We exit the train and Dawn has really enjoyed her ride with me. I can feel the shackles slowly slipping off. I realize there were only about 15 other people on the bus. I realize that we didn't have to sit together. And as I go to leave, she asks me, you know, Andrew, do you want to split a cab? <laughs> and this time thinking very quickly, Sparing myself, I say, actually, Donna, I'm going to walk. I would be walking for a long time, but it was worth it. <laughs> and she looks at me and says, oh, all right, uh, can you spot me for that extra hash brown? So when your mother tells you not to take candy from strangers, she actually means all foods. <laughs> when your mother tells you, you know, not to get in the cab with strangers, you don't do it. And the one thing I learned from this whole kind of experience with Dawn, who I still believe is a very nice woman, was that a hash brown is a debt that you can never repay. <laughs> and breakfast has never really been the same since. So, thank you.